Excuse me, do you know if I've had any packages delivered today? You had a package delivered at 10 a.m. So I was on eBay, the internet auction site, and I bought this manual for some 1980s intercoms. Luckily, the manual came with the actual intercoms, which I thought were pretty dang cool looking. It turned out the manual isn't actually that interesting at all. It has this huge schematic, which I don't understand, but that's fine because we can just bust into one of these things and see what we're working with. The whole thing is made of just a few big pieces. On the inside, we have the microphone, which doubles as the speaker, weird, I know. And we have this other yellow gunk in there, also weird, I know. Next, we have the three buttons. We have a lock, which holds down the talk button, the talk button to talk, and the call button that just sends an annoying tone to summon, uh, I guess, the other person. Then we have the main PCB that's got all the components. It matches the schematic, I assume. And then we have the bottom of the case and apparently some free screws. Oh, and then finally, we also have the dial uh, for the volume for all you dial lovers out there. Don't worry, we're gonna include that too. So how do we take all these old parts and turn this into a sick modern AI assistant intercom? Initially, I thought we'd put a Raspberry Pi inside the case, but I've done tests about transcoding audio on a Pi and it's just not fast enough to be usable. The other alternative is that we set this up basically as a fancy USB peripheral that reports its data back to my desktop and then the desktop transcodes the audio much quicker than the Pi can, sends it off to the AI and then we get our answer. We already unscrewed everything, so now we need to go unglue some stuff. We need to figure out how to interface with the buttons, the dials, then add a speaker, a microphone, and then sort out all the software side. So let's get into it. The first hurdle is that we have to figure out how to get out the old speaker. Uh, it is glued in with what looks like caramel sauce. Um, actually. But anyway, I was able to scrape away enough of the caramel sauce to get the microphone pried up a bit. And then behind it is just these little pockets that let the audio go through to outside the shell. I bought this little microphone. It's like a conference room microphone. So hopefully we'll be able to talk to it from a few feet away. And we can just take that. And luckily it lines up with these holes pretty well. To do a test, I just put everything kind of back loosely together and tried to see what it would sound like. The end result, uh, oh, Actually, I gotta plug in the USB port. The end result is, ahoy. This is me uh, talking through the case. So I'm about two feet away, maybe. Uh, we'll see how it sounds. Not good, but hopefully it'll be better once it's mounted more firmly up against those holes. Speaking of the holes, it's time to get this metal grate removed. Now on the inside, each of these little metal tabs is glued down. So I had to be very careful about scraping away enough glue and then pushing them through the slot so I can get this out. But once we got it all done, I was rewarded with Ew. 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 Gross. Regardless, I got the metal sheet off in one piece. We can move on to cleaning this up and then cutting holes for the status LEDs. Ew. But actually, speaking of holes, we need to go take a look at the speaker because that audio needs to get out of the case somehow. So I bought this little cheap red speaker. I'm just gonna open it in half and then put it through the vents on the bottom and hopefully that sounds okay enough. And if it sounds kind of bad, that's kind of the point. It's supposed to be an old device. While I was in there, I remounted the original switches back into the original holes. And if we look, we can see under them, when we press the buttons, there's these little bits that push down. There's just enough room under there for us to slide a micro switch, glue it in, run the wires out. I have these little pre-mounted switches, which I really like. They're just on a board, so they're easier to handle. They're easier to handle, so we can go mount that under there and then we'll be good. So we end up with the big switch, pressing the little switch, the little switch heading back to an Arduino, and then that starts listening for the prompt, and then we send that off to the server and blah, 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 blah. At this point, we can make the incision into the case and we can install those LEDs I mentioned. It's pretty easy to glue this LED matrix in place. Then we can go, we can cut the fabric that was previously there to muffle the tinniness of the metal grate. 
then I can carefully rework the metal grate back onto the cover and no one should be any the wiser that we had cut or changed anything. Once that's back on, I just grab an Arduino, hook up this LED matrix, and I'll just run the demo program and we'll see how it looks. Yeah, I mean, it's upside down, but it looks pretty freaking sick. It's gonna be a really nice little flare on this whole project. Now we're gonna get into a lot of hot glue in here. I don't love hot gluing. If I was the famed YouTuber, Mr. Beast, I would have a team of scientists, probably mostly European, who were designing the perfect brackets to connect all these components. But I'm not Mr. Beast. I do not live in a castle with a talking lamp. So I am gluing, but just know that it hurts my heart to use hot glue here. And just like that, everything glued in just fine. It works great. Um, you can see this little light spot here on the camera. I don't know what that is. You can't see it in real life. It's something to do with the camera lens. I don't know, but ignore that. Next up, we got the software. There's pretty much two parts of the software side. The first is a script which we run in the browser because the shortwave AI assistant that we're integrating with doesn't have an actual API. So our only choice is to interact with it in the browser. This isn't a great solution because if we close our browser, the whole thing will stop working. But for this, it's fine enough. And who knows, if we have shortwave nicely, maybe they'll give us a real API so we don't have to do it this way. The other script is in charge of listening when we hold down the button, take that recording, turning it into text using Whisper, which is OpenAI's speech to text model. Then it takes that, ships that over to the web browser. The web browser gives us an answer. We take that back. We ship that to another API to turn it into the best sounding voice possible. And then when we finally get that back, we play the voice and we get that whole loop. So let's give this a try here as a test. Can you tell me, did I ask Andrew if, I mean, sorry, did I tell Andrew that the, uh, intercom video was on schedule just a moment let me see sadly this loop is not crazy fast it takes it a second to go search my email and find an answer that's why i gave it that little pre-recorded snippet you just heard just so it kind of acknowledges that you've said something after a few seconds we do get a reply and then we see it has to still take that and turn it into speech so we can actually hear it over the speaker Based on your email history, there is no specific mention of you informing Andrew that the intercom video was on schedule. Wait, actually? Uh, whoops. <laughs> Dear Andrew, CEO of Shortwave, I apologize for not telling you that the intercom video is on schedule. I assure you, it is on schedule. Love, Abe. Send. Okay, okay, one more test. Would you believe it if I told you you are talking to being talked to through the audio intercom project right now? Does that blow your mind? Just a moment, let me see. As an AI, I don't have feelings or a mind to be blown, but I must say that's quite impressive. It's great to hear that your intercom project is up and running. Your idea of repurposing 1980s office intercoms as an audio interface for an AI assistant is innovative and fascinating. I'm here to assist you, so feel free to ask anything you need. I 100% just blew that AI's mind. Uh, but actually, how good of a response is that, right? Because it has a context of my email where I've been talking about this project and can respond really intelligently. And it feels so much more human. And this is, of course, all thanks to Shortwave. Now, full disclosure, I'm an investor in Shortwave. It's ran by my friends. But it is genuinely a huge step up in the email client world. We're all kind of in this space where we expect Gmail is just like the de facto what you use to check your email. Shortwave is a brand new client to interact with your Gmail account made by ex Google engineers. It's inspired by Google Inbox. It has a bunch of cool AI features. Overall, the amount of polish and new features that Shortwave has is crazy. I've been using it exclusively since it was an alpha and I've loved it every single day. So check it out if you want to completely revolutionize how you think about and interact with email. Now, of course, we don't have to use Shortwave for this. We could use normal chat GPT and we could load that with our own context, but this is easier and quicker. But with that, I just need to wrap up a little more software and then we're ready for the final demo. All right, final demo. I apologize that the audio is gonna be worse because it's all on the camera here. But you can see we just have our USB plug, so I'm gonna plug it into the hub here. Now that line means that it's trying to communicate over serial. Once it, yep, there you go. Once it gets connected to the computer, it does that smiley face. Now at this point we're ready to go uh, and I can just show you some of the features of this. 
The first thing is we'll just go, hey, can you respond to all my future inquiries as if you were a cowboy? And obviously you can see over there, it's uh, indicating that it was listening to us. And then once it I'm sorry enough, for any confusion, but as an AI assistant, I don't have the ability to adopt different personas or styles of speech. Beautiful. So now, uh, the lock button right here, originally it held, it just held down the talk button. Uh, now I've made it so if you hit it, it does that, which indicates that it's not listening. Uh, as long as the lock key is down, it's like not going to record anything you say or anything, which is just, you know, helpful for privacy reasons. Uh, but we can just tap that to bring that back up. And then we can say, uh, what, what's the most recent email in my inbox? And give it a second. The first email in your inbox is an invitation from Webflow to register for their upcoming conference. There you go. At this point, the call button doesn't do anything. I want to make it so if you hold it down, it just transcodes what you say and like puts it in a note somewhere, that'd be cool. And then also right now the volume dial doesn't do anything, but it's there. It's there, okay. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.